So what is actuarial science and how is it used in the real world? What are those actuarial exams like? Well, these are all questions that you might be wondering if you are considering becoming an actuary and getting a degree in actuarial science. So by the end of this video, you are going to have answers to all of those questions and much more. So let's get into it. By the way, I'm Bria, associate of the Society of Actuaries and founder of the Actuary Accelerator community, where we train future actuaries how to become top candidates so that they can get their actuarial dream job as quickly as possible. Now let's get into this video. Three, two, one, go. Okay, so what is actuarial science? Well, basically this is the science and theory behind what actuaries use day to day in order to make their predictions. And this is what you're going to learn in school if you go to school for actuarial science. So basically, if you're not familiar with what actuaries do, they are really responsible for predicting the future. They are like the fortune tellers of the insurance world. What they do is they collect data over years and years and years and years and use that data in order to to make predictions about what's going to happen in the future. So for example, an actuary might be able to, let's say, predict the probability of a tornado going through downtown Toronto in the next five years. They might be able to predict the probability of a 60-year-old man having a heart attack. They might be able to predict the probability of an 18-year-old driver getting in a car accident within the next year. Actuaries can use data to predict so many things, and the math that goes into that is really what actuarial science is. And now, not only do they estimate and predict when things are going to happen, but they are also able to put a financial dollar amount to them. So let's say, for example, that tornado did go through downtown Toronto within the next five years. How much is it going to cost the city? How much is it going to cost to homeowners? How much is it going to cost for vehicle owners? What are all the financial impacts going to be of that tornado going through the city? That's what actuaries are really trained to do. And this is what you learn when you take actuarial science in school. Okay, so how is actuarial actuarial science used in the real world? Well, mostly it's used in insurance. So actuaries typically work at insurance and what they do is they are able to predict what is going to happen in the future and put a financial value to it. So for example, if someone wanted to purchase an insurance policy that would maybe insure them in the event that they get a heart attack. So we talked earlier about a 60 year old man getting a heart attack. What is the probability of that happening within the next five years? Well, that 60 year old man might want to have an insurance policy that may maybe pays $10,000 in the event that he suffers from a heart attack. And that $10,000 could be used to cover the expenses associated with having that heart attack. Well, an actuary would be responsible for figuring out the probability of that happening and how much it is likely to cost them. They also have to figure out how much the insurance company is going to have to pay in expenses. And they also want to make a profit. So the insurance company is really going to have to take all this into consideration and figure out how much they should charge that person, that 60 year old man, for the insurance policy that he wants. Now, an insurance company isn't going to just insure one person. They're probably going to offer this exact same policy to maybe 160 year old men. And a certain percentage of those men actually will have a heart attack within the next five years, but there'll also be the rest of them that don't have a heart attack. So the actuary would be responsible for figuring out those percentages. They'd be responsible for making sure that there's enough money overall to cover the $10,000 benefit that each of the 60 year old men that suffer from a heart attack to make sure that they have enough money. The actuary would also make sure that there's enough money to be able to cover any expenses that the insurance company has to pay to administer and uh, keep these policies up to date. They also have to make sure that they're making a profit. So that's the actuary's job overall is to make sure that there's enough money in the bucket in order to pay for everything that needs to be paid for from these 100 policyholders. Now, most commonly actuaries do work in insurance, but they also are very good at assessing risk like we talked about earlier. So actuaries can actually be very beneficial in other types of companies that don't offer insurance. So for example, most companies are exposed to what we call reputation risk. There's always the possibility that something is going to ruin their reputation. Maybe it's a really bad review. Maybe it's some sort of product breakdown. Something like that could really ruin their reputation and cause people to avoid purchasing from that company in the future. That's a big risk for a lot of companies. So an actuary could could come in and assess that sort of risk and determine what the financial impact would be if there was a reduction in reputation for the company. And the actuary would also be able to help the company figure out ways in which they could reduce or minimize the possibility of these risks actually coming to fruition. Another possibility is maybe key person risk. So in a lot of companies, there are a few people that are very, very, very critical to the company. They know everything about the company and without them, the company might suffer financial 
financially. So that's key person risk. Those people are very important. So the actuary might be able to assess the value of those people to the company. They could determine what would actually happen if that person was to leave the company or maybe die or maybe get some sort of illness that wouldn't allow them to work anymore. So these kind of things are things that actuaries can assess and they would also help the company to figure out what they can do to minimize the possibility of that happening and also minimize the financial impact of that in the event that it did occur. Okay, so you might be wondering why do people want to become actuaries? There are so many reasons for this because it is an amazing career. Actually, if you don't know, I used to work as an actuary, but I decided to quit my actuarial job and start helping people become actuaries because I know it's an amazing career. So some of the most common reasons that people get into this career is uh, the salary. Well, that's a big one for a lot of people. Actuaries tend to be paid really well because they are so well qualified. There's a, an exam process that they have to go through. They're very well educated. They often go through difficult bachelor's degrees and stuff like that. So because of that and because they are so specialized, they tend to get paid very well. Another reason is because of the challenge. A lot of actuaries love to be challenged. They love to problem solve on a day-to-day -day basis and that's something that they want in their day-to-day -day life. Math is another reason that a lot of people get into the actuarial career because they just love math and they want to do that every day. It's also a career where there's lots of opportunity to advance. Actuaries often move up the corporate ladder fairly quickly. Um, you'll see a lot of the time CEOs and CFOs and CROs of big insurance companies are actuaries and that's because they've been able to, over their career, develop a really good understanding of how insurance companies work and they really become good at making financial business decisions that make sense for the company. And there are so many others but another one I do want to mention is the work-life balance. For an actuary, you're often working nine to five kind of hours and then you get to have the rest of the time off, which is not something that is very typical in today's world. So a lot of people are drawn to the actuarial career because there does tend to be a very good balance between work and life, especially once you are fully qualified and don't have to continue studying for those exams. So now that you know kind of why someone might want to be an actuary, you might also be wondering who makes a good actuary. Well, there are quite a few characteristics I would say of someone that makes a good actuary and this is definitely someone that loves math. You have to be someone that is fairly good at math and really loves to challenge themselves in a mathematical way. Actuarial science and being an actuary is really a mix of math, business, and finance so if you don't like any three of those you're probably not going to like the actuarial field very much. I'd also say in order to become an actuary you kind of have to be stubborn. You have to have that never give up mentality because getting through the actuarial exams which I will talk a little bit about later are very difficult. They are tough exams. So you have to be someone that's not going to give up just because you fail once or twice. You have to be someone that's going to keep going. This is also a good career for someone that doesn't want to be outside. It's a very office oriented position. You're probably going to be sitting at your desk in a cubicle most of the day on a computer. So if that's not the lifestyle that you're looking for in your career, I guess the career style you're looking for, then you're probably not going to want to get into the actuarial field because that is what you're going to be doing most of the time. This is also a really good career for someone that wants to challenge themselves, someone that loves to be constantly learning and continuing to better and better themselves. In this career, you never stop learning. There's always something new. There's always changes coming around. So if you are someone that loves that constant challenge, that never give up mentality, that problem solving, and that's something you want in your career, then this would probably be a very good career for you if you like all those other things. And by the way, I do have a video about seven things that you should know before you start your actuarial career. Um, I will link to that right here and down below in the description of the video so you can watch that next. Okay, so I mentioned actuarial exams in the previous video, so let's talk a little bit more about what you actually have to do in order to become an actuary. Now, for most actuaries, they have to pass 10 actuarial exams, and these exams are fairly tough. You have to do that in order to be fully qualified. However, you can start working in an actuarial role before you're done all 10 exams. A lot of the time, someone will start working when they have two or maybe three exams passed, and then as they're working in an actuarial role, they'll continue to pass exams until they've passed all 10 and are fully qualified. We call these fully qualified actuaries fellows, but there is another level of actuary called an associate, which 
which is kind of like the intermediate step of becoming a fellow. So it kind of goes associate and then fellow. In order to become an associateship level actuary, there are seven exams. And then to get that fellowship level actuary, the fully qualified actuary, there are three. And by the way, here I'm talking about exams in Canada and the US. That's really where I specialize. I have helped hundreds of future actuaries pass these exams and get into actuarial jobs. So specifically, I am talking about Canada and the US. It might be different in other areas of the world. Now, on that note, there is usually some confusion between the Society of Actuaries and the Casualty Actuarial Society and the Canadian Institute of Actuaries and all the other actuarial bodies out there. This video is specifically about Canada and the US, so I am going to briefly touch on the Society of Actuaries, the Canadian Institute of Actuaries, and the Casualty Actuarial Society. So the SOA is the Society of Actuaries, and this is basically the governing body for actuarial exams and actuaries in general, one of the governing bodies, I guess you could say, um, in the United States. So if you are someone that wants to work in Canada or the US, you're actually going to take actuarial exams through the Society of Actuaries. Now there's another body called the Casualty Actuarial Society, and they also are a governing body for the United States and Canada as well, but they both deal with different types of insurance. So the Society of Actuaries deals more with life insurance, health insurance, things like that that really speak to the person, whereas the Casualty Actuarial Society really deals with things like property insurance, so houses, vehicles, business insurance, those sorts of things. So depending on what type of job you get in insurance, you'll most likely go one direction or the other. But the good news is that you don't have to decide on whether whether you're going to go the casualty actuarial route or the, the society of actuaries route right now. The exams are the same for the first little bit um, and later once you actually get your job that's when you can decide whether you want to go the CAS route or the society of actuaries the SOA route. Now the main differences for you in those are the exams so each organization is going to have different exams really catered to what type of insurance you're working with but like I said at the very beginning of your journey it really doesn't matter which one you decide to go with. Now for for those of you that might be in Canada, you also have to look into the Canadian Institute of Actuaries. This is really an organization that is responsible for regulation in Canada. Now the good news here is that you don't really have to do much extra in order to get into the CIA, the Canadian Institute of Actuaries organization. You really just have to take those same exams to the Society of Actuaries or the Casualty Actuarial Society in order to meet the requirements for the Canadian Institute of Actuaries. Now you do not have to be a member of any of those organizations in order to take exams. Once you have passed seven exams, that's when you will really actually become a member of those. Once you become an associate, you will become a member of those organizations. So really, this isn't something that you have to worry about now. All you'd want to focus on very early on is passing your exams and learning the other skills and qualifications that actuaries need, which I do talk a lot about on this channel because I have helped so many people. We actually have a whole program where we help them gain those skills that they need need to gain in order to become great candidates for actuarial positions. So down below in the description, if you are interested in becoming an actuary, I will link to some videos that I recommend you watch next because there are a lot of things you need to know beyond just this video. There are so many things that I can help you with and other videos that are going to give you some insight into the career and what you can do to become an amazing candidate so that you can get your actuarial job. There are a lot of people that want to get into the actuarial field, so the more you can do to really stand out to actuarial employers the better off you are going to be. Okay, that is all for this video. I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.